Welcome to you all for this live event hosted in the context of the Swiss Digital Days. And I want to thank Nestle for offering the Alimentarium the opportunity to be here with you. Whether you are watching via Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn or Twitter, please do not hesitate to take the opportunity to ask questions. You'll be able to do so in the command sections of your platform although that's not functional for Twitter though. Um, and we will display some of these questions or remarks and I will do my best to give you answers in the second half of this event. So my name is Nicola Godino. I am uh, one of the curators at the Alimentarium, which is a food museum located in Vevey on the Lemon Lake in Switzerland. And today I will be covering some aspects of a topic which is on everyone's lips, veganism. Is it a profound trend revolving around the philosophical approach uh, which was present for quite some times already or are that just uh, a, a passing fad a bit like the paleo diet which appeared in 2012 uh, and has been slowly fading out since then one thing for sure veganism set up as a lifestyle by some especially among the youngest questions our societies in their foundations. Gastronomy, nutrition, ethics, ecology, but also militancy, popular cult culture, and, and, and conflict between generations. All these aspects are put on the front of the scene by the vegans or by the veganism. But since it touches also with what we eat, the core of nutrition, one might wonder if this could have related health aspects. And as you will see, and as the title of this conference says, we will go a bit around these questions. Can uh, veganism be a healthy journey? So bear with me, we'll go through this, this small talk. Uh, keep your questions, ask your questions, we'll follow them, and, and let's start with them. So healthy journey, what are we talking about? Vegans represent an estimated 1% of the world population. Still, if you look at Google Trends, the, 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 the word vegan has been steadily increasing since 2015, actually since 2000s. So there's a real uh, tendency for people to talk about it, to say things, to, to present themselves. And actually there's a lot of discussions, a lot of press release information floating around, whether it's good, whether it's bad, what it does, what it does to our societies, what are these people, activists, what are they strangely doing? And most of all, that's related also to what we eat, to the food we eat. And so us as the Alimentarium, the food museum, uh, we wanted to talk about this aspect, to try to understand a bit more what's behind that, what it is, what is veganism. And we, we started doing research, but we first wanted to hear not about headlines, not about journals, but to get the stories of people engaged into that, uh, 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 the veganism, wanting to be, uh, being vegans or, or maybe having stopped to be vegan, but still adopting the philosophy of it. So we started early last year with uh, an application, a web application that we call My Vegan Life, where we ask contribution from people either which are vegans or I'm no longer vegans or, or want to become vegans or I'm not vegans but are interested by the topic to tell us their story, what they've been through, what do they believe, what's their what's their stake on, on veganism. And um, so we had that web app, we had contributions made, a lot of them which helped us actually understand a bit more what was behind this movement behind veganism. Uh, we received more than 230 uh, um, submission, personal stories telling us the good, the bads, their belief. And that helped us actually uh, build up an exhibition that we display in the museum uh, that we started in, in March last year, in March this year, about veganism covering all these different aspects. So we started from these vegans, started to understand what it is, what are the stakes uh, at play in, in this story. And we, we made that, but not only in the museum as an exhibition, classical museum exhibition, also sharing that online. 
as we do today, uh, exchanging, getting insights from you, from others, and uh, and getting to know a bit more and, and making that available to everyone, wherever they are, through a web interface. So that was the question. What is veganisms? What we first found is that basically it's a concern for animal rights. Um, if you look at what the statutes uh, uh, of the vegan society says, it is a philosophy and a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, for clothing and any other purposes. That's the core of this, of this philosophy, being able to exclude as far as possible and practicable this exploitation of, of, of animals for food, clothing and other purposes. And by extension, that promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefits of humans, animals and the environment. And we'll see these three elements quite often in the, in the discussion around veganism. Benefits for humans could be health, you know, health benefits, animals, that's the cruelty uh, and dimension, and the environment, also a lot of discussion about the impact of the uh, uh, animals on the, on the, let's say, the global warming, for example. So here I just wanted to pinpoint that although with the food museum, obviously veganism is much more than just a diet, much more than just eating those animals. It has uh, 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 elements related to uh, other uh, aspects of exploitation by animals, being zoo, being uh, 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 clothes, being entertainment uh, dimension, circus, for example. So how could we depict the, the, the world of a, a vegan? What's in the, the what would be the mind map behind veganism from a vegan? So we asked one of our uh, uh, the people we knew to draw a, a, a mind map of what vegan represent for her actually. And so she made this presentation, these mind maps. I'll go this so you can see it properly. This mind map about vegan, and you see different aspects related to, to that on this complexity. There will be, for example, elements related to animal welfare, animals. Uh, what do we do with that? The ethics of animals. There will be an element related to social aspect. How do we all as a society deal with using or not using animals? How, what type of conflict do that create to be vegan, to adopt this? Uh, uh, um, way of living. There is also aspect related to environment and aspect related to health, as we mentioned already. Um, regarding the history and the philosophical background of, of uh, uh, veganisms, we already did some content, and you can find that online, related right? the history of, of non-meat eaters. Actually, it's not just a fad of the last 10 years. This philosophy has been around for centuries, uh, more than centuries, actually. It can, it can have roots uh, in, in thousands of years ago. And also there's a lot of activism. There's a lot of people talking about it and, and having this philosophy being well known. Um, uh, uh, that that's stated. We had these kind of also some some uh, conferences made going over those philosophical aspect and activism aspects of uh, veganisms that you can find online. Although uh, also we do have videos related to the consumption of of meat, how that relates to those social aspects of uh, of uh, of meat, being a meat eater or non meat eaters. All these elements covering social aspects or social science humanities aspect of veganisms. Uh, you can already find and recover that already. You'll find that on our website, uh, www.alimentarium.org, or on YouTube when it's videos uh, um, in, uh, in that regard. One aspect that we haven't covered yet and what we want to cover with you today is especially the one related to health, uh, especially because a lot of these headlines that we've been talking about uh, 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 already relates to health aspects. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? Should we eat uh, uh, vegan? Is there harm 
for eating vegan can that be dangerous to be eating that and there's a lot of things going around and we wanted to maybe not to clarify but to explain some of these elements um, uh, with you and to go over some of these elements with you and that's how we came up with that presentation is veganism is that healthy journey what's the health aspect related to veganism when we talk about health and food we'll talk mostly about nutrition and nutritional values of food stuff and here we will go through rapidly some of these elements nutritional elements uh, and that we find in the different food types. So it's a rapid infographic that will be displayed where we have the different food types and corresponding nutrients. Some of them are, well, they are all essential for humans. And we'll see the links between food types, food elements uh, uh, with these nutrients. Wood, fruits, and vegetable provide a lot of fibers here, for example, and a, a bit, but not much, of iron. That would be the, the idea. That's a simplified uh, indication of, of, the, of, the, of the diet and contribution for some of these key elements. So here are listed the core uh, food elements, fruits and vegetables, cereal and pulses, dairy products, eggs, fish and seafood and meat, and we'll see their relative contribution to these uh, key nutrients. Like for example, fruits and vegetable will provide us a lot of fibers, some folate, uh, a bit of iodine, a bit of iron. While cereal and pulses will provide fibers, folate, proteins, a bit of omega-3, uh, some, some fatty acids which are essential for our body, and some other elements. Dairy products, a lot of protein, some folate, iodine. So you can see how each food groups can provide different sets of elements, of nutrients that our body actually requires uh, to, be, to be healthy. Now, when you talk about diets, we talk about exclusion or not, or choice between these, these food groups, and especially the, uh, the omnivorous diet is basically a diet where we would, it's the meat eater diet, we would eat each of these, of these food elements, according to a food pyramid so we need to do it properly but that's basically not excluding any of these of these food groups while being a pesco vegetarian uh you would oops sorry you would be excluding um meat only have fish and seafood while being in a vegetarian diet you would exclude meat fish and seafood and but just be keeping uh, 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 milk eggs and and, and dairy products and the vegan diet, so vegan, the, 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 the diet aspect of veganism, which is uh, um, excluding meat, fish and seafood, and any food of animal origin, only food of plant origin. And while the omnivorous diet done properly uh, will provide each of these key nutrients, we'll see that by excluding some of those, being pesco-vegetarian diet can have a minor impact you still have most of your nutrients you still have all your nutrients actually a vegetarian diet can also provide uh, these nutrients there might be tricks regarding some fatty acids and vitamin d but that you can still find vegetable source providing those and uh, and when you go to the vegan diet so exclusion of all animal product you can provide basically all of these nutrients you need to take care of some there will be one definitely missing which will be vitamin b12 and uh, well, we'll go around the vitamin B12 in some uh, in some uh, 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 in some minutes right now. So the idea is that excluding some uh, um, uh, uh, food groups for philosophical purpose, indeed, uh, that may have uh, an impact into the nutritional status. I say may have because there might be ways to go around that, but that's why the questions can. Uh, 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 be raised uh, and why the question can be asked and is being asked. So that's about uh, uh, nutrients and food and how can I balance my meal uh, uh, regarding the diet I'm choosing and uh, will I be okay if I'm omnivorous and uh, what does that mean? And for this, we wanted to, we actually, since it's the Swiss Digital Days, we wanted to pinpoint here some of the digital activities we've been doing at the museum, especially developing an app, a web app, and actually an application that you'll play online, uh, which we call Nutrition App, which will actually help us 
or help you maybe realize how to balance your diet around during the day. So it's basically an app that you can play online. You go to our website and you will be able to play this little, this little game of making your daily meals, either as an omnivore or as a vegetarian or maybe as a vegan and try to balance your meal around the day. So what does that mean, balancing my meal around the day? It will be to get an evaluation of key nutrients and saying if you exceeded in some of those, let's say about sugar and salt, for example, or are you missing some? And this help will actually uh, let you do that. I do have a small demo uh, just showing you how it works. Basically, you choose your age, you choose your gender, that's important for the evaluation at the end. And you choose the type of diet or what type of meal you will be you will be doing for the day. And then uh, concoct your meal for that day by drag and dropping things. You have a choice of items. Uh, so we made a subset of all possible items. And that you can choose from this list, drag and drop, either in the breakfast section or snack or lunch or evening meals. Let's say, for example, having coffee for breakfast, drag and drop, and that would be a small cup. If you add on top of it, you can increase the size of the portion you're taking. So a small one, a big one, a large one, uh, 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 just a bit of it. So you can like this, fill your day with your meals. We have options for a lot of different uh, uh, type of meals that you could do. And then you get, whoops, you saw that, you get an evaluation and you can adjust that. Let's go back. Too fast. Anyway, the idea is that you can play with this application, make your meals, and then get an evaluation. And you get your, your nutritional profile. What you can do also is compare that and make another day uh, with another diet. Let's say you start first with omnivorous and then you start with either another omnivorous, but one of your colleagues or you'll try another day. Or you can try also to make a vegan or a vegetarian diet and then compare what would be the outcome. I'm just jumping to the outcome. That would be a single one. It can give you how much energy, uh, where you between the boundaries of the right energy. Are you eating too much calories, not enough calorie? Did you get enough water, proteins, carbohydrates, sugars? So you get this type of evaluation, which tells you, okay, that's a bit too much. That's not enough. And you may have deficiency in, in some aspect. And you can do that for, as I mentioned, different type of offering for a vegan diet and try to balance a vegan diet based on what you have available. And, and compare those two diets. So it's not it's not to be a full evaluation of anyone's meals. It's just for you to be able to play and say, okay, well, that would be that's doable to balance your meal as as a vegan, following the vegan diet rules. Um, what's allowed? It's possible to balance your meal. You will always lack some vitamin B12. We'll discuss around that. Um, but that's possible. That it's, it requires some effort. It's not like you you don't balance it as easily as you would balance an omnivorous diet. Actually, you might be surprised by the, by the result of your own omnivorous diet in what you, be, you might be lacking or what you be, might be exceeding. So we developed this, this small app and we'd like to get feedbacks. Would you, would you play for it? Do you think that's a good idea? What we'd like to see as a, as a evolution for this app? Let's have, let's have it to try. Let's give it to try. It's present in the museum and now it's present uh, online. That's one of one, one of the of the dimensions, just to be aware of, of what uh, a vegan diet can be. For everyone, uh, uh, or most of us, when we think about veganism, we think about meat, we think about animal. So we think of not eating animals. So we think of not eating meat. And usually we associate meat with proteins. So quite often we find this association like being vegan, you might have issue with proteins. You might have issue with what makes the, you know, build your, your muscles. What are those key elements of proteins? Although you will be able to find proteins in a lot of different uh, uh, other offer uh, which are not meat based it, it, it can be it can be soya it can be vegetables it can be insects so insects will be around discussion are they sentient animal would they be eatable by vegans so far no but that might be at the at the limit 
or, or almond milk. You can find protein from other sources. Um, so let's talk a bit about the proteins. Um, why do we need all these all, all these proteins? What are what are there for? Uh, basically, they are elements that are coming from food, and they are made of small, tiny particles, uh, which we call amino acids, and that makes us our body. So why do we need proteins? Basically, they are the major structural component in our bodies. They are needed for growth, for maintenance and repair. They have many other functions as enzymes, transporters, hormones, precursor of many, many functional molecules. And we should eat proteins every day. We lose proteins, we should re re uh, replace them, we should eat, eat all these. And where do we get these proteins? Basically, it's from protein-rich food, such as eggs, seafood, so animal product, a poultry, red meat, but also vegetable product like pulses, tofu, nuts. Uh, you can find proteins in milk, yogurt, cheese, so dairy products uh, from, from insects. There's something that is interesting that fish, fish, and eggs provide what we call complete proteins. They are composed of all these essential amino acids, these tiny, tiny elements that our body needs. These amino acids, this is there. We'll do a bit of chemistry now. Uh, they are composing those proteins, which are large molecules. They're already like made of 20 types of amino acids. These 20 amino acids include nine amino acids that are called essential. Um, essential because our body, our, our chemical enzymes and all that cannot synthesize them from other molecules. We need to get them through our food. So we need to provide them through what we eat. Uh, the amino acids are chemical compounds. We are all made of chemicals, and these are 20 of the chemical compounds that we are made of. And you have the list of all of them, alanine, asparagine, aspartate, and so on. And what is depicted there is the one that are essential. There's actually these essential amino acid there. There's even more amino acid essential for, for uh, children. So during childhood, some of them cannot be readily synthesized or available uh, uh, through our body, and we need to, to have them. So childhood has specific requirements. So we do have these essential amino acids. So we need to have food which provides uh, th these amino acids. Uh, so here you find those key amino acids that our body needs with the requirements for information. And you'll find that meat, eggs, and dairy products provide all of these amino acids. That's why we call them complete proteins. They have all these elements that our body need. But as I mentioned, you do find proteins, you do find amino acids also in vegetable products, like in cereal and, and grasses, like rice, wheat, barley, and oats. Uh, you'll find most of these, almost all of these amino acids, but one, which would be lysine. So if you only eat cereals, you might be lacking one of these amino acids. But if you eat pulses, you also have most of these amino acids, but one, methionine and cysteine. These two will be lacking in the pulses. The thing is that by combining pulses and cereal, actually you will be able to get all your uh, amino acid uh, 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 in your body. Oops. So how much do we need? Actually, we need roughly one gram of, of, of protein per kilogram of our body weight. So roughly like 60 grams per day for a person weighing 70 kilograms uh, would be okay. That corresponds to either 200 grams of cheese or poultry or meat. Uh, if you eat only this, uh, you will get uh, the, your portion of 300 grams of seafoods or 700 grams of pulses, assuming that's the only thing you would be eating. These requirements vary with age and condition. More proteins are needed for growth, pregnancy, in elderly people, and some illness and injuries. Uh, and we also require, as I mentioned, those essential amino acids. What is of, of interest is that in the Western world, actually, we definitely don't, uh, we, we're not lacking protein sources. Like we, we tend to eat too much proteins. We could, we could reduce uh, significantly uh, the amount of protein that we usually, as population, uh, consume in the Western world. Doesn't say everyone, but most of us. So we are likely to be 
not lacking proteins. Uh, if we are meat eaters, but also we, we could be not lacking proteins, even being vegetarians or, or vegan. Um, so does the vegan diet provide a sufficient intake? Well, actually, as I mentioned, vegans won't be lacking that much proteins. That's not really an issue. Uh, the issue is more like making sure that they get the proper uh, ratio, the proper quantities of amino acids. And that would need a properly balancing uh, uh, the meal, balancing between pulses and cereal, uh, making sure that you consume uh, uh, enough of them, and that could be strong in the society power. So uh, you'd still need to, to force yourself to eat those. Um, but there's no major risk of protein deficiency uh, for those who had up the vegan diet. And that, that's quite some, that's quite clear. And that's also a position of some, some nutritional uh, society or, or, or dietic association that you'll find throughout the world. So despite what we may think that lacking animal product will equi be equivalent to lacking uh, uh, meat and therefore lacking proteins, this idea is this kind of a, not maybe not a misconception, but it's not really something that is of real concern for nutritionists or the tissue or, or the medical uh, 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 body. What is uh, of, of bigger concern is something that is called B12, it's a vitamin. It's the vitamin B12, which is uh, uh, found, which is of importance for that diet and, and, and that needs really to be properly acquired. So what is that vitamin B12? Vitamin B12 is, is actually a chemical compound again. Uh, it's cobalamin and it's one of the eight B vitamins. You know, we have vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D. Some of them are, are declined in several number, B1, B2, B8, and B12 is, is that now, vitamin B12. Uh, why is that useful? Why is that vitamin? Why is that vital to have this, this compound in, in our food? What should we provide them? Well, it actually plays a key role in our metabolism, in the way our body functions uh, for all our cells. It's essential for our nervous system to function properly, essential for, for the, the growth of our nervous system and essential for our bodies to produce red blood cells in our bone marrow. So we can see that that vitamin is really vital and you, you, may, you don't want to lack to like that one. And what, what happens if we are lacking vitamin B12? Actually, that's something that's, that's well known. It's a chronic deficiency can cause damage to the nervous system, fatigue, lethargy, giddiness, depression, forgetfulness, shortness of breath, looking pale, and that's uh, as a result of anemia, headache, and recurring symptoms uh, for those who are deficient in, 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 uh, in vitamin B12. This stereotypical uh, veggie of, of the 19th century, like the, the weak vegetarian, is not really an issue of muscles, which would think they are weak because they don't have proteins, they don't have muscles. It's really coming from the lack of vitamin B12, that clinical profile of those deficient in B12. And that's only by discovering this compound, the cobalamin, that, uh, uh, that we're able to cure properly uh, by adding B12, uh, what, we call, what was called pernicious anemia, which was fatal. Um, not having enough vitamin B12 over several years, I must say, you don't die in two days, uh, can, be, can lead to fatal condition. So that's really something that's essential. Where do we find vitamin B12? Although it's essential, for most creatures on our planet, there's only some bacteria and archaea that have the genes and the enzyme to produce uh, vitamin B12 naturally. All other organisms, animals or whatever, must find a way to assimilate it, to, to have it in, in their body. I won't go over the discovery of B12. That's something you, you, you can find into our, into our website or coming to the museum. Uh, that's that's a really a recent discovery. Uh, we want to thank the, uh, the uh, women in science actually for making this discovery. And, uh, uh, and this being able to synthesize, to get uh, and this not from produced from bacteria, but uh, as a synthesis was very, very recent in 2007. So that's something that's, that's really science of the, of the 20th century and 21st century that's kicking in. 
As we mentioned, actually, we need to ingest vitamin B12. Uh, uh, what happens is that you will find that in some meat products, because ruminants like cows, actually, they will be able to get bacteria into their guts, synthesize vitamin B12 for them, and they will be able to absorb the cows this vitamin B12 because the way their digestive system is made, which is not the case for humans. Um, we need to get our, our vitamin B12 from other sources. And these sources are animal products. Um, and if it's not animal product, then it will be as food supplement. Industrial production of vitamin B12 is based on replicating the natural fermentation processes. Uh, we select bacteria in a control environment and we have them, or they have them, actually synthesize uh, uh, vitamin B12. Several types of bacteria have been used, some for many days. Now we have new bacteria coming on that, but basically it's production through bacteria uh, on, on petri dishes or big petri dishes uh, to provide that. And actually, like in 2008, there was more than 35,000 kilograms of, of vitamin B12 produced around the world through this uh, uh, kind of uh, fermentation. So there's supplementation that is needed. As I mentioned, there's actually no uh, vegetable, uh, uh, no proper source of, of uh, vitamin B12 in, in, in uh, vegetable products uh, uh, as of today. Uh, so it's either consuming uh, animal products, could be, could be dairy product, could be meat, or, or getting a food supplement. And I'm sure there's going to be questions around that. Why should we have a, a food supplement? Can we find other ways? And is there issue about food supplement or using food supplements? So how much should we, should we take? How, how much is enough? Uh, shouldn't we, could we have issues if we take too much of this vitamin B12? Could there be intoxication on, on, on getting vitamin B12? Actually, a, a good thing is that vitamin B12 is an hydrosoluble, so it, yet there's no real store uh, in our body and it's, it's non-toxic. And we could, we, you, if you eat too much of it, actually it will go through the natural pathway. It will end up into your, into your toilets and no big issue. Um, so we don't absorb everything, we absorb what we need. There's recommendation, we could take like a vitamin B12 every day, a short, a short uh, uh, quantities or maybe every week or every every two other weeks and that the quantity will change uh, and there are specific uh, questions also for for supplementation well children but we'll go around uh, uh, the children question just uh, in, in a few minutes so vitamin b12 is the issue so we talk about proteins we talk about vitamins and maybe you're now puzzled okay there's a lot of nutrition there what should i do what is recommended what are the questions how can i do that and how, who can help me um that's the question mark this question is is this healthy is it feasible is it recommended to become vegan how do i go about it uh, that's that's good questions actually so is it healthy actually on the recent year, there's been a rising consensus regarding the many benefits of adopting a plant-based diet or, or going towards a plant-based diet. Maybe eating a little bit meat, less meat, but a bit more plant-based or plants, vegetables. Around the advantage for our health, we, we can include a, re, a reduced risk of becoming overweight, or suffering from related health problems, developing cardiovascular disease, various types of, of, of cancers. Though this is <coughs> a real improvement, and that goes with what the World Health Organization tells us, increasing food and vegetable consumption to reduce the risk of non-communicable diseases. So that's really the trend of any health organization. Uh, doesn't say don't eat animal product, doesn't say don't eat meat, but just say try to increase fruits and vegetables. The benefits are there. That's especially true for the, for the, for the Western world, but it's increasingly true for developing countries uh, where there's actually, we are consuming too much of these uh, meat and or animal products. 
and, and, and less of fruit and vegetables. So that's the, 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 the crude recommendation that we'll find from the health uh, organization. However, uh, there have not been yet an adequate amount of studies to allow true consensus on the specific direct impact of a vegan diet. That question really remains open and open for debate, uh, which is, is it better to go vegetarian, vegan, vegan, as we saw, there's a lot of aliments, there's a lot of foods that are excluded. So a lot of food items are getting out of it. So is that is that too much? Uh, uh, could we recommend that? Um, and that, that's a real issue. And, and so far, the picture is not clear. Uh, you will find studies, uh, and there's actually studies showing that people going vegan, people going vegetarian, or, or, or pesco-vegetarian, a mixed things, there's really benefit for health. Um, but also it's people that do, it's not necessarily also only due to the diet itself. It's also all the uh, um, environmental choice that people make, the, the, the way of living, being health conscious, being nutrition conscious. So that's what we see that people engaging into veganism tend also to be more aware about what the nutritional uh, uh, um, foundations are. They tend to be more aware of, of the link between diet and health. Uh, it might be this awareness that brings also health value. So there's no clear issues, but there's no clear uh, 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 rules or direct impacts on the real benefits of a vegan diet versus a vegetarian diet, for example. What we know is that there might be stronger risk of deficiencies. We talked about the B12, but it's not the only one. And that's where this comes this question of, is this feasible? So no doubt there's a common consensus that it is possible uh, to eat according to the principle of veganism, excluding animal products, if and only if this diet is followed scrupulously, is well balanced and supplemented in vitamin B12, that will be that that that's a that's a, a real goal. You need to supplement, but just having the supplementation doesn't mean that it's 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 easy to do it. But it's possible. The fact that it's possible doesn't necessarily mean it is easy. Um, Healthcare and other entities that have addressed this issue always mention requisites such as well-planned. And you'll find that a well-planned vegan diet can be healthy. Uh, no issue with a well-planned vegan diet. And that's, that's indeed true. It is feasible. However, it's not that easy, especially because our culinary customs, our traditions, particularly in Western countries, are based on a diverse, balanced diet that include meat. We have hyster we are historically uh, meat eaters, or omnivorous, I should say, not necessarily meat, but eating uh, 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 animal-based uh, products. Maintaining a well-balanced vegan diet that provides essential nutrients requires reconsidering our habits and learning to adopt new eating patterns and new routine. Uh, you don't, you cannot, you don't have the reflex. You need to learn that. It's not something that you've been learning since you were kids or that you can exchange radi radically with your friends because we are not all vegans. We are living in an omnivorous world and all is made in that regard. So that requires a, a sufficient effort uh, um, to be following um, a vegan diet properly. And for the time being, even though there's uh, uh, there's uh, or the limited range of vegan products available is gradually expanding. We can discuss around that Exp expanding because well, it's plant-based food, and people might not want to be vegan, but they may want to follow the WHO recommendation, increasing their proportion of plant-based uh, food to have a more plant-based uh, 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 or increase the, the to have a plant-based diet, basically not excluding uh, animal product, but favoring that. And in a practical way, uh, so being able to find things that are easy to cook, easy to prepare, uh, helps, and that makes uh, uh, vegan products or, 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 or plant-based diets 
uh, products uh, more readily available. And you see that increase, you see those products now on the shelf. And they are not all targeting the 1% vegan uh, as consumers, they are targeting maybe 5 or 10% people vegetarian or, or, or 5% or people that want to engage into that dimension. So, so far, the environment doesn't make it really, really easy. It is feasible though. Now, is it recommended? And that goes with our first point about is it healthy? We saw that adopting a vegan diet is feasible. It requires careful and constant monitoring, which for most people would entail supervision by a health professional. We are not all nutritionists. It's easy to make mistakes. Given the complexity of applying a vegan diet in everyday life, health practitioner cannot really recommend it adopting it directly. And they, we cannot say everyone should become vegan and that's it. Do it by yourself. They rather promote a varied balanced diet that might include certain animal products because that's the way we are used to deal with it. So even though a vegan diet cannot be promoted per se, it is feasible, it, it can be, it can it, and there's health benefit. It is not ruled out. It is seen as a potential personal choice that will require considerable diligence. You need to make care of that. Basically, it's don't do that by yourself. Consult someone who knows how to do it properly. Cons uh, consult someone or, or expert in the field of nutrition and health. Dietitian will be of, of great help. Look at what is being said by uh, 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 nutrition societies around you. Like many countries, including Switzerland, Germany, and France, actually issue warning. So they don't recommend, they don't say it's, it's, it's bad or good, but they still issue warning for high-risk groups, such as expectant or nursing mothers, infant and young children. Indeed, the, the risks of approximating a vegan diet are particularly high for these people. A deficiency of essential nutrients, such as vitamin B12, or omega-3 fatty acids like EPA, DHA may have serious consequences that, that prove difficult to remedy. Uh, when we talk about these children, infants or, or, or expectant mothers, that's because they have a, a children in their womb, these are small bodies in development. They require these nutrients, omega-3 acids and B12, in their brain in construction in their blood system in construction. And you know how development works. If you don't have the right nutrients at the right time, you may have issues that it might be difficult to repair and in being, be, being adults. So a deficiency in adulthood might not be that tremendous. It takes some years to come or some months to come and you can re, re, reset that. That's okay because your brain is there, is for, is form. Uh, your connection are there, your blood is there. When you are developing kids, there's real issues. And that's why uh, many countries have this warning for high-risk groups. Uh, not all countries have that, and we can discuss why. Uh, in Northern America, in, in the US and in Canada, uh, they are not that strong in the warning. Uh, it's, they are not that strong in the precautionary principle that is a strong view in, in, uh, in Europe. So here we see different in, in, in the philosophy of what could be health recommendation. Um, but you will see in many of uh, vegan websites, they are often stating what the uh, 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 American uh, 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 Pediatric Association is stating that it's feasible for all age, uh, all condition under uh, uh, well-planned diet. Uh, remember that there's other countries such as Switzerland, Germany, France, and other European countries that do actually issue uh, 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 clear warnings. So beware of that. How to go about it? Well, you know, there's a growing number of people who are concerned about animal welfare and choose a vegan diet. They willingly share their tips and tricks on the internet. So there's actually no lack of information and advice. You'll find a lot of things anywhere, everywhere. And when I say a lot of things, beware, like some phrasing and assumption may be misleading and convey false information, false data. I don't want to talk about fake news here, but you know, information belief system might not be that accurate. 
and it is therefore quite important. You can go with that, but also check with information from official bodies or reputable organization association, like nutrition association, uh, WHO or whatever. These official bodies would frequently update their documentation, including development in the scientific knowledge and the range of product available. So look for information. There's, there's a lot out there, uh, but also look at the who's talking to you. Uh, is that organization actually a friend you know? Uh, what is the how to which extent you can trust what's, what's being said in the, in the in the quality of of, uh, of the information being transferred or, or transmitted to you? In any case, it is essential to include vitamin B12 in any diet for the time being, uh, uh, um, as long as we don't have other sources. Vitamin B12 can only be provided by taking uh, food supplements. And you may want to have a regular monitoring by a medical professional or, or dietitian. That's really the recommendation. So how to go about it, get information, get to know what's around, get to your friend, webs, uh, blogs, confront that with actually official bodies, what's being stated and confront this information and, and take your supplements. This being said, I, I must say that all uh, a lot of I would say that many of the people that go to the vegan diet tend to have a better nutritional knowledge than the, the common population. We see that these that the knowledge of nutrition is actually kind of higher in people engaging into that dimension, especially because they are aware of uh, of the potential issues of not managing properly the diet for for vegan and they still want to adopt the philosophy uh, which is not related to diet or health, which is related to animal welfare, um, not, not uh, using animals, not exploiting animals. And that relates to some diet dietical or, or, or components. And for there, they will pay attention to it. I'm not sure it's really much clearer now that I depicted all that, uh, but the key recommendation is still, you know, get to the information that you, you, you may want to or check to the source of the information you, you want to have. The alimentarium doesn't have to be the best information. You can fact check everything I've said. We will add all the links to those external sources in the in the comment sections of these uh, of the of the different platform you are following us on to. Um, so yeah that will be the, the, the main stuff. So here we covered a small aspect of, of veganism related to health. Could we say that veganism is a healthy journey? It can be a, a great journey if you're following the ethic. It can be healthy. Uh, there will be hurdles to that healthy journey, but it can definitely be healthy. But it's still a journey which you need to pay attention to. Don't, don't go to that journey blind. Um, and there's all these other topics that we, we, we could want to refer to in that vegan uh, ma ma mind map. This being said, uh, I end up the talk now. Thank you for your attention. Um, that's, that's the time where we can go for some of the questions if you, if you, if you had some. So I see uh, there's some comments there. Uh, we'll go through that. It was great having you. Let's see. questions um, so we had some so let's see <laughs> okay so we could have a full discussion on that sorry but i don't agree about your statement of the paleo diet fading away actually it is fading away uh, if you look at the social networks that it used to be a big buzz in 2012 since 2016 it is fading away it doesn't mean it's good or bad but uh, in terms of the impact on social networks there's there's less people talking about it uh, paleo and other ancestral diets don't have to be trendy to effectively work for sure it's not because it's trendy that it's working uh, but it's not because it's uh, it's trendy that it that it that it's not working too. So uh, that a trend doesn't mean if it's accurate or not. Uh, uh, unlike veganism, that's not related. But uh, yeah, indeed, trend doesn't mean it's 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 valid, of course. Um, An ancestral diet doesn't mean it's valid 
too. Um, that would be another discussion. But yeah, I would say that the, the paleo diet is something is fading away and it's re it may revive at least on social networks. So thank you for that for that point. Uh, I had from Serm like send the link or give us the name of the app. You'll find that on our website. You go to www.alimentarium.org. So it's an it's a web app. So you don't find that right now on on your smart smartphone. We may want as a V2 to develop that. Um, so you go on the on our website alimentarium.org. You look for you search for games. And on the list of the games, you'll find this nutrition app. And we are really interested in getting feedback on that. I think. It's just an app to, to play with. It's not meant to provide or to replace any real nutritional uh, command, but it's, we thought that the data is there. There's huge databases that, that list for all product you can find or you can cook, like thousands of products. What are the nutrient profile of these products? So once you know the portion size you're getting, you can get you know how many nutrients I'm having. And, uh, and 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 from that we also have recommendation from from institution telling us what would be the required amount of calories that need to be eaten of salt of sugar of DHA all these and you can confront by combining what you ate during your day and what would be the recommendation for that day if you kind of balance the meal and we think that might be just fun to play with uh, we have ideas to 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 change, to have it evolve. We'd like to get some your 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 feeling about the app and what we could improve in there. So yeah, go to our website, play it, and, and, and let us know. Other comments or other questions? Uh, let's check. Okay, so we had one. Hello, I'm diabetic and I was looking forward to start a ketogenic diet. Ooh, will this prevent me from ever becoming a vegan? Well, I'm not, I cannot really give you any advice. Uh, I wouldn't be there. Uh, what you have here is, is something that's quite important. Diabetic, so you need to deal with your, your, your carbohydrates, that's for sure. And a ketogenic diet, it's this diet that actually will try or will, will, will lead you through eating less of those carbohydrates, sugars like potatoes and all that. Um, so you need, you need to eat less of these carbs and, and would that prevent you from ever becoming vegan? That might be extremely difficult, I would foresee. Maybe doable, but quite difficult. Um, starting a ketogenic diet, you take out a big chunk of food. Uh, none of the animal food, because animal food, animal-based food, don't contain much actually carbohydrates. Uh, they would contain proteins and fats, mostly, and water. Uh, you will take out a big chunk of the vegetable world. Uh, you will take out a lot of cereals, potatoes, uh, and some pulses. So all these which are key for having a well-balanced vegan diet, you will not really be able to, to eat if you are following a ketogenic diet. So I'm not saying it's not possible. It will be a big, big uh, a challenge. Uh, what you may want to, to maybe you, you may want to have a ketogenic diet, but still reduce the amount of meat or, or you, you find other ways to be vegan. But here, that's one of the compromise that was in the statement of the vegan society. Uh, do as possible. It might not be that possible for you. Um, other questions? Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, I've been told that there were some quite some amount of vitamin B12 in spiruline and in other algua. Well, actually, well, spirulina is not really an algae, it's also a type of bacteria, like a, a, a cyanobacteria. The thing is that it, it does contain some analogous of the vitamin B12, chemical compound that are like it. Um, but it's not the efficient B12. It's these analogous do not have the same function. In fact, actually, they could impair by competition the absorption of, of B12, of cobalamin. So chemically, they kind of look like uh, uh, by some analysis, you may find that you have this B12, but it's not the real B12. Um, of course, you can eat spirulin because it's rich in protein. It's it's where to get uh, 
uh, uh, uh, but it's not a way to get B12. Actually, it's recommended to avoid consuming spirulin less than six hours before getting supplementation of B12 because of this competition, because this fake B12 will prevent you from absorbing properly B12. So that's something you find a lot, a lot about uh, B12 sources that some algae or some spirulin will be providing B12. And uh, that's, I don't count on it. Um, that's, uh, I'm, I'm not giving specifically recommendation, but you'll find that everywhere. Uh, please do not rely only on spirulin to get your B12. Um, maybe I was too clear, too, too, making too strong of my positioning, but yeah, uh, that, but that's, that's really one of these news you'll find on internet by people selling B12, by people wanting to get a natural source of B12, bacteria, you know, your B12 from the pill is natural. Um, it's not chemically sensitized, it's coming from bacteria. Uh, and spirulin are kind of bacteria. But spirulin won't provide you with the right B12. So that's the fake news, don't rely on that. Uh, we're almost, yeah, we're almost at the hour. Um, um, do we have other questions or, or comments? Let's see. Uh, when one follower, we, we raise a lot of, of questions. Uh, why do we have a problem with too much protein? It's the most associating micronutrients. That's indeed the most associating micronutrients. We don't have really an issue or we could have issue by eating too much proteins, uh, but we are not at that level. The fact is that it's often associated with eating too much uh, uh, meat related product, associated with too much fatty acids that are not the proper one. So too much protein, that's not really the issue. Too much protein coming from meat is, is, is the issue because of the product it's coming with. But yeah. Uh, And maybe the final one, a plant-based diet is different from a vegan diet. I eat more vegetable than a vegetarian and I'm still omnivore. Yes, of course, a plant-based diet means like you will, you will base mostly of your of your diet from, from plants and you, you could have, and that's what, what should be favored. And it's, a plant-based diet is not a vegan by definition, a, a full plant-based diet might be considered as a vegan diet somehow but uh, it's not synonymous and, and you don't need to feel vegan if you eat mostly plant-based. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, I agree. Well, this being said, I hope uh, this uh, presentation was, was at least uh, you, you, you get hooked to it, you get some information from it. Uh, once again, I want to, to thank um, the Swiss Digital Days and Nestle for hosting this session and inviting the Alimentarium to talk about veganism. As I mentioned, you will find much more information on our website and on our different channels, um, social channel like in Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, just don't hesitate to, to follow us, Alimentarium Museum, and the website is alimentarium.org. You can come to the museum, we have a full expo on veganism where we cover many other aspects here you saw like even in, in one hour it was difficult to cover just a tiny bit which was the health aspect and we haven't gone through completely through it yet um there's a lot to say we'll see you uh, in a few in a few weeks like in november for another another event uh, here we'll talk about the food of the future uh, will this be vegan will this be something else what technology will be having around and and will this be technology new ones or old technology re which are revived let's see um let's let's meet again uh, uh, in a few days from now a few weeks from now follow us and, and, and get informed uh, this being said i wish you all the best have a good evening and and see you soon you can still ask questions on the comments or, or drop us messages have a nice evening and bye bye